Today I'm going to show you how to pull your primary and secondary apart and to get your inner box housing off. Okay, so first thing, you're going to want a 19 millimeter. take off your primary bolt, just loosen it because it's probably going to be sucked up tight like this. You'll have to hit the clutch and pop it back to the bolt and then take the bolt the rest of the way out. Okay, because if you don't, you'll take your bolt all the way out, then your clutch will shoot loose and go onto the ground. Okay, I don't have my spring in here, but the spring would be between this cap right here. This cap right here will have the spring in it, which in turn goes into your primary here. I just don't have the spring in it right now. I already pulled the primary apart. <clears throat> when you take this one way off, you just want to spin it a little bit, and there's going to be two springs in here. They go on the shaft this way. Okay, if you can find it, put your fingers over them and then pull the one way bearing off then remove your springs later else you can wrap a rag around it you know just wrap your rag around it like this and then pull it off that way you don't lose them it'll be inside the rag then your next thing is your secondary it takes a 17 millimeter okay A little bit more force on that one. Inspect your helix, make sure it's okay. You're gonna need a puller, it's a PCP 16. Just wanna get it started in here. I believe it's a 17 millimeter too. Nope, it's a 19. Nineteen millimeter socket. And there you go. That easy. Ooh, got some water in behind there. Okay, next thing. You're gonna, want to take your, you're gonna want to take your torques out here. It's a number 29. It might be just a little bit tricky to pull this off. You might have to pry just barely on the back side to get it off. I have RVT on mine, but um, yep, you'll do that. Then the next thing is to split the case apart. Okay, you got some 13 millimeter bolts, three of them. This is the first bolt right here. It's on the clutch side right here. The next bolt, it's gonna be 
and right here this is your actuator on your transmission and you can see right underneath here is where it's at you do not have to remove the actuator when you're removing the transmission unless you're going inside the transmission the last one is right here on top of the actuator here's the actuator here's the bolt right here once you have all three bolts removed you just want to pry in between here you'll see this little area right here there's a little area right here you just pry until it comes apart be easy with it though you don't want to break it now you just kind of want to break it through this a little shaky shaky And there you go. You want to set it upright like this so that the oil doesn't leak out. And if you have a problem where your oil is transferring from your engine to your transmission, this is the seal that has to be replaced right here. There's not a seal in the transmission side, only in this side. The next step is going to be taking your thermostat housings off the front and the rear. You want to take your intake off and it's just simple. You just want to take this 8mm bolt out. This one you'll probably have to use a 29 Torx because it's really tight inside there. Same thing over here. Two 8mm bolts right there and right there. And then here are 10mm bolts. Two of them. And same thing over here. You have one and two on the front head. After you remove all your bolts for the intake and for your thermostat housings here, you'll just twist. Now this is the front side PTO of the clutch would be on this side, okay? You're gonna just twist it out like this. See how I did on the front head there? And it'll just come out. You know, you kinda wanna go like this. Next thing that is in order, is you're gonna take all your eight millimeter bolts out of your valve covers, there's four of them. You should be able to find those pretty easy. Once you removed your valve covers up here, uh, you just wanna remove, I think it's 15 eight millimeter bolts out of your PTO case. This would be your rear cylinder here. You can just use an impact like I did. I just didn't wanna film it. And then you just use these little pry tabs right here and you want to pry it off evenly because you don't want to damage the case bearing if you haven't already. Once you take your PTO case off, you might have this pin still stuck in here. You just want to take a rag and try to loosely pull it out. You know, don't put too much uh, pressure on it. Just set it off to the side. Then you want to take an eight millimeter. There's two inside the head here. Okay, a 15 millimeter to get your tensioner out here. I've already loosened mine. Keep in mind this has a lot of pressure on it whenever you pull it out. Then you wanna take a small screwdriver. Inside here you'll see a little screwdriver head where you can 
take this tensioner and release the pressure off of it. I'm going to back it all the way out. Take a 13 millimeter and you want to take your cam chain gear off. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Slide it over there. Okay. Next thing you want to do, take your head bolts off. I have a E16, E14. It looks like this. You may not be able to have access to this or have one. Uh, you can also use, I think it's 11 millimeter five point or a 10 millimeter six point. Don't quote me on that though. There's a five millimeter down here on the guide. It's a five millimeter Allen, sorry. Okay, we should be able to remove the guide now. Uh, no, I think it stays in. Yeah, like I told you, I'm not an expert. I'm just showing. Okay, now you want to remove your head. Oh, no matter how long you let one of these sit, there will always be. Ooh, that is not good. And now your guide will come out and your chain. Oh, the horseshoe clip in the bottom. I forgot to tell you about that. You have to remove that as well before you can get your chain off.